born in hell, they just learn to play their part uh-huh. These pigs ain't trying to help these kids the way they say they are True. But it's time to break the glass and get, get about, about that J-A-R, J-A-R. A lot of people, um, they ask me a lot, like, what inspired uh, Hog Mob Ministries? Um, I think a lot of the reason for it is just because it's, it's a lot different than, I guess, what um, most people consider traditional ministries or especially modern ministries, I guess, you know what I'm saying, to, to really look like and the way that we move and kind of we're not like just um, individuals who work together in ministry, but it's really um, you do get that family vibe here. When God gave me the vision for it, it, it was birthed from kind of like what I experienced even before I came to the Lord. When I was growing up, I didn't have like the typical story, you know, of the average dude, with, you know, that comes from the streets or whatever. I mean, I actually, most most of my homies didn't have fathers and stuff like that, but, you know, I was fortunate enough that I did, you know. Um, my mom and pops was in church, you know, uh, my whole life, you know, pretty much uh, I was raised up uh, going into church. I experienced a lot of things that kind of made my heart hard towards the Christian faith and, and just religion in general, any idea of God. I just didn't understand him. I was very um, rebellious, you know, towards the notion of, of of there being like this God that's judging and and you know he pretty much does what he wants to do. He doesn't check in with me, so you know, in my life, didn't really go the way I wanted it to. I lost my older brother when I was very young, you know, and and um, that hurt me, and I really didn't, I, I couldn't understand that, and a lot of stuff wasn't really explained to me, um, you know, in a way that I could really relate to. And so it just left me with a hole in my heart. I suffered from depression just as long as I could remember. You know, I, I got into self-medication and stuff really, really young. You know, 10, 11 years old, stealing cough syrup from the store, drinking it just to, you know, feel a high or whatever, you know, just to deal with whatever emotional things I was dealing with. I got into self-mutilation, you know, I got burn marks and cut marks on my body. I used to sneak out at night and just, you know, do just mischievous little devious things, you know, to people or property or animals or whatever, just trying to get this pain off my chest, you know. Uh, um, I didn't know how to how to righteously express what I was going through. Even though I had a family, I felt like I, I, my family didn't really relate to me too much. And so I even having them, I still felt like I was alone, you know, and, and I, I we didn't have shared experiences like my mom and pops. They don't come from what I come from. I'm, I'm the first generation gang member. I'm the first one to go to jail and different things like that. I just felt like that black sheep, that outcast, you know, that no one could really relate to. I didn't know why I was struggling with the depression. I didn't even know where it came from. Searching for that kind of pseudo family and that love and that fellowship that I didn't really receive from the church. Churches can be very clicky sometimes, and you know, if you're not with the in crowd, then you, you know, you don't really feel accepted. We didn't have a big family, you know. It's not like I had a bunch of uncles and cousins or nothing like that. You know, I'm born in California, but we have moved away, and then we moved to a very gang active city in Sacramento, California, in the early '90s, and so I kind of got baptized in the gang culture um, quickly, you know, going to and from the store, to and from school. I mean, you always had a situation where somebody was tripping based on whatever environment you was from. And the neighborhood that I uh, spent time in and and really took me under the wing was uh, Oak Park Blood neighborhood. And, And, you know, they took me under. I ended up getting put on and when I was about 13. And I learned quick that it wasn't really everything people said it was. You know, I got I got in a situation where I was uh, left for dead, you know, by so-called brothers and, and actually an enemy. God sent somebody who I would have considered my enemy to save my life. And that's really when I learned that, you know, this isn't really going to be about red and blue or this neighborhood versus this neighborhood. At the end of the day, I knew that my life was probably going to boil down to real versus fake. When I was about 18, uh, 17, 18 years old, I, I was uh, struggling with depression heavily. I had denounced the faith. I had denounced God. Didn't want nothing to do with Jesus Christ. I was fully kind of making that tipping point to where it was just like I had made the decision. I was aware of God. I believed in his existence. I even believed in hell. And I actually made a conscious decision to make that my eternal destination because I just didn't want nothing to do with what I believed to be just this fake 
um, grasping at the wind, you know, um, and, and trying to appease some God who's never satisfied with you and you never feel good enough for him and all of this stuff, man. I, I didn't understand him. I didn't understand the gospel like that. And so it, it really made me uh, really despise him. You know, I felt like he was playing games. You know, I felt that his love was laughable. You know what I'm saying? If this was his love, then I didn't I didn't want that. I could get that in the street. I made my choice, man, and, and sitting in a room, you know, super just depressed and going through it. I end up uh, putting a gun to my head and um, I'll, I'll never forget it, man. The Holy Spirit fell upon me, you know, and, it, and it's weird because I had seen being in church, like I've seen people encounter different things and it wasn't like I started shaking and speaking in tongues and falling out or doing none of that, man. It, but but I, I, what I can say is I felt a feeling I had never felt in my entire life and that's peace. You know what I'm saying? Like I literally felt this spirit of love and peace just kind of wave over me in a moment of me just yelling out for help. And I wasn't even really consciously yelling out to God. I was just like angry and just, I just wanted everything to be over with. The Lord, you know, he, he met me that day and he touched my heart and he changed my heart. I didn't see life the same. I wasn't the same person and, and everybody around me noticed that like immediately, like I was different. You know what I'm saying? And it's not even something that I I, I, I wanted. Um, he, it's just something he gave to me. I'm forever and eternally grateful because had I had my way, you know, I would have just been another dead ghetto kid. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 and been burning in hell, man, you know, in my sins. And but God, you know, he saw fit, man, to pull me out of that. All I really knew as far as brotherly fellowship was this gang culture that I that I had been baptized in and really had been indoctrinated with. So when I came to the faith, um, I didn't really fit in in the traditional church. But then also I didn't really want to do the street thing no more. So I actually started kind of like trying to recruit people out the street who was kind of on the same path as me or felt the same way I felt. I actually grew up in a rival neighborhood, so I knew the importance of having brothers and accountability around you whenever you move and different things like that because, you know, um, it, it, was, it was hostile. It was, you know, it was warfare at many times. And so, um, you, you know, you kind of, you learn to stand on your own as a man and you made sure that you had the heart to be able to do that if it came down to it. But then you also wanted to make sure that your brothers were straight and you, and you, and you, dealt with brothers who also wanted to make sure that you were straight. I really had a heart for that, you know, when I came to Christ. I didn't really get discipled much. I didn't really have a pastor or nothing like that. I mean, a lot of people, I had talent and I started using it for God. And so a lot of people saw me more as a product than really a person and tried to exploit me rather than disciple me. And so um, that type of stuff, you know, um, it kind of made my heart hard towards the, the institution of of like traditional church or whatever, I kind of started, I guess for lack of a better term, I kind of started winging it, like, you know what I'm saying? Like just doing the best I could with what I knew, you know? Um, and I read a scripture in the word that says, you have no need of men to teach you anything for the Holy Spirit will reveal to you all things. And I'm not saying that we don't need people teaching us stuff, you know? Um, but what I'm saying is, is that like, as far as it's beneficial if you have a good teacher and if you do have a good teacher and you're able to have that man that's a dope thing and you definitely need to take advantage of that resource but at the end of the day god don't need no one to reach you to teach you to speak to you like he don't need that to happen like he can get through to you i mean even if you just read your word man and the spirit is is confirming things in you if you are diligent in seeking him you, He's going to take you far. And, and that actually me reading that scripture saved me from walking away from God, because since I didn't have what I've seen other people have, I feel like, well, I'll never really be able to do this right. So what's the point of even trying? I might as well go back to whatever I was doing. And when I read that scripture, I was like, it, it just showed me how personal that personal relationship could be. God will disciple me like it's, it's I, I don't like I, I could stop trying so hard to look for like a person to cling to for strength and a person to cling to for wisdom and all these things but god i can get this straight from the lord and i needed to see that you know what i'm saying and so from that point on i just started trying to be for other brothers what what you know 
I really didn't have, you know, as far as that that spiritual um, um, guide, that that spiritual counsel, that accountability partner, you know what I'm saying? That that would not just from afar kind of tell you what to do, but actually go through life and live it with you and experience things with you and cry with you and, and, and help you, you know, get resources to to get, you know, out of whatever situation you're in. That's where Hog Mob, you know, the ministry actually was birthed from. It's just you know this this heart of of true fellowship you know the biblical definition of fellowship um is not just breaking bread and and worshiping together and believing in the same god it's also about bearing each other's burdens being willing to um go through the fire with one another um win lose or draw you know and that's what i always looked for in the street but never really found it but now that I came over here and, and, and God brought me over here, what I actually see now is that these street gangs are just Satan's perversion of what the true body of Christ, that fellowship really is. I didn't realize that, you know, until I came over here. I used to think that this side was fake. But now that I'm here and I'm really participating in the, the action of Christ and in like the, the, the culture of, of Christ and actually living day in and day out with my brothers and, and living, you know, this life together and we all working out our salvation and helping each other out. I really see that what I was looking for my whole life uh, is, is to be found in Christ and in the fellowship of the body of Christ, the true body of Christ. I just wanted to make sure that I started something and, and was a part of something that was real and that, that really reflected the God that I claim to love and serve. For the first 10 years or so, man, we had a lot of problems and 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 um, it was very unorganized because, I, you know, I didn't have no education. I was still learning myself, you know, as a leader and different things like that. And um, so I ended up going through some things. God ended up humbling me. You know, I ended up stumbling and, and falling deep into drug addiction, alcoholism and different things like that. Um, you know, I struggled with lust for a long time and, and, and have reap some seeds from you know that that lifestyle that i was living still one half in the gang life one half foot out like just trying to find my way you know and the lord was slowly but surely constantly bringing me up and the brothers around me maturing and as we started maturing the ministry started maturing i'll never forget when uh i had uh children on the way and my baby moms uh was uh she got in a car accident and the the, the kids passed uh, they were twins um passed and then later on that night my little bro um he got murdered and i was just with him a couple days before that and god had told me to preach the gospel to him but i didn't because i was ashamed because i wasn't really living it like that you know what i'm saying like i knew it but i just wasn't practicing it and so i felt like i didn't have the right you know what i'm saying to speak on it and um, my, my little bro lost his life, man. And, and um, I, I really, that, that hit me hard because I realized that in my selfishness and then just in my, just my lack of, of making a true commitment to the God that, that has done so much for me, man. And even to the point of giving up his own life, you know, um, my unwillingness to really trust him you know, I look back now and I see that that's what the, was the hardest thing for me to do was I had been through so much and has been let down and betrayed by so many people. I think I kind of subconsciously was always waiting for God to be like a man, you know what I'm saying? And for God to fail me like man did. And so it was hard for me to really put all my life in his hands. You know, I put the parts that I was comfortable with him handling, but I always kind of kept a little piece to myself after that moment when I lost so much at one time and I just really, it brought me to a place of humility of understanding that I'm not in control. As in, in even as much as those parts that I thought I was holding on to myself, I thought I was retaining some measure of control. I, I realized in that moment that even that is an illusion. Like I'm, I have no control over nothing. I don't even control whether I, I, I breathe another breath from this point on or not. And I got on my knees and I dedicated myself to cleaning you know um some things up and, and and especially this ministry so that's why if anybody who's followed it over you know any measure of time you've seen it grow um that's because you've seen us grow we got so many brothers all across the country and even in other countries man and, you know my, my heart is just to see my brothers be everything god's called them to be we ain't no rap group we ain't no record label 
you know um, we have no desire to be any of these things you know we all just move in our various gifts and talents and, and, and passions and we just try to magnify God to the greatest of our ability in that um, our first and foremost priority is that we're walking with Christ and that we're really um, living out the gospel that we preach in and um, also for me my, my first priority is making sure that my brothers um, what's going on in their home life and behind the scenes and their marriages and, and as fathers that they're not missing the mark in those areas for all y'all men have been supporting us and and um i thank you you know real talk man i thank you i know it's been a bumpy ride um but god has been with us man and and, and all praise and glory uh due to the most high jesus christ man just god bless you guys man and and, and keep the faith get involved in, in your community get involved in your local church and be discipled you know don't run from accountability man step into it you know face the fire because the fire will purify you in jesus name god bless y'all man my Betraying the homeboys, I wouldn't dare But if I say I love them, gotta tell them the truth The fatherless follow us and then get swallowed up By the same game that swallowed us It's obvious we fell in the youth huh. You see that Ruger in his hand glistening That little shooter think you'll love him if he busts for you But you were just using him for your ambitions And he couldn't see nothing because he trusted you He gave his life for your hype He's doing life for a stripe And you won't even write, bro, a kite You need the little homies living wrong to get it on That's why you ain't the one that's trying to fight for what's right for real Hope you listen, I ain't dissing, I'm trying to play with you and they rally this in it and got some influence the little homies is listening to what you feed if you said it he did it ain't no coincidence the big homies raised us to die for him on the other hand it was christ gave his life for us they said that love's earned so we would ride for him but god love with no return somebody lied to yeah. us brotherly yeah. love overcomes our destruction yeah that's the acronym for blood right christ love overcame our destruction i guess he the only one doing blood right community revolution and progress huh. that's the acronym for crib right christ unity's the solution to progress i guess he the only one doing crib right yeah yeah somebody lied to us somebody lied to us somebody lied to us come on somebody lied to us you see it? somebody lied to us i swear somebody lied to us they wouldn't be the ones that would die for us christ did it on the cross